everyone, Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters and I'm super, super excited to be part of Janet from RTS Scrapbooking's 6x6 paper pad hop. Um, so I know that she has been using the Scrapbooked Generation 6x6 uh, paper pad um, class which uh, she has loved and has been super thrilled with. Now, I didn't actually purchase this class. So for my 6x6, I have taken inspiration out of her series and just went with uh, other layouts that Janet has done to inspire me to give this a bit of a go. So I have got the Cool Kid, uh, the Crepe paper, paper Cool Kid collection that I'm having a play with today. And I'm just doing a little bit of paper sorting, paper deciding. You can see there that I've got three um, sort of more busy pattern papers that I'm deciding between. And I narrowed down quite quickly the two colors that I wanted either side. So I've got these three main pieces of pattern paper that I'm going to be using to form sort of the bulk of my background. And what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting off those branding strips and I'm going to cut it directly in half. So two strips of the six by six paper directly in half. So three by six. And then what I'm going to do is once I have done that and cut those up, I'm going to use those to make um, a, a pattern paper background. I'm gonna line those up together to make a pattern paper background. And I will show you in just a minute how I'm gonna do that. Now I'm not gonna use the entire length of the six by of the six um, inches because then it would fill that whole um, length of the page. And I want a little bit of the white showing. So I am gonna overlap those a little bit and make an, uh, basically like a square inside the page. Now I didn't measure it, I just kind of guessed. Um, how it sort of fit nicely in the size that I just visually liked the look of. And so that's the idea there that I'm going to have with those three rectangles of the different color down the center and then my four photos across. Basically, I was going to put those across where the join was so that the join wasn't noticeable. Uh, I decided it needed a bit more matting, so I'm going to use this single piece of 6x6 paper with all of the words on it and cut that into strips, one inch strips, and I'm going to join all those strips together to make a big frame, basically, uh, around that and use that frame to mat my three patterned and coloured papers. So you'll see in a minute here how I'm cutting this into one inch strips and then the way I'm going to line those strips out. Now obviously I definitely did not have to do it in this way. I could have used 12 by 12 bits of paper. Uh, I could have even used a larger paper pad uh, maybe in an what an 8 by 11. I think you can get paper pads in that size or even 6 by 8 size paper pad but the purpose of this hop was to use our 6 by 6 papers and I wanted to have a go of pulling out as many six by six paper pa papers as I could and using as little um, 12 by 12 paper in this layout as I could to really show how versatile your six by six paper pad can be and how much you really can get out of it with just a little bit of fiddling and a little bit of cutting um, if that is something you have the time to do. I know some of us need to do quick pages, um, but I will tell you that once I've done this more fiddly border, the rest is super quick. It really was um, easy once this border had been made. The border was definitely sort of the most fiddling around. And I absolutely could have got a 12 by 12 piece of paper to make this, this mat, this border. But yeah, as I said earlier, I wanted to roll with using my six by six paper pad. So I won't show you the whole process now. I think um, seeing the way I'm doing it now, makes it clearer for you to understand what I've done, how I've joined that all up together. Um, Cause I know when I was verbally trying to explain it, that was a little bit confusing, but visually it makes much more sense now. Um, and what I do off camera is I stick the mat, the, sorry, the frame onto the white paper first, and then my three colored papers I stick on top. And by doing it that way, it just makes sure that um, the frame is actually, looks actually even all the way around the page. There's no 
sticky out bits or anything like that. It's a nice even square. I also decided as well, which you will see in a moment, I'm talking a little bit ahead of what's happening in the video. You will see that I also decided to mat my whole white piece of paper, my whole white 12 by 12 onto a black 12 by 12 as well. So in a minute, you're going to see a black mat for my white paper. You're going to see this um, cream and black frame then with my three pattern papers switch ta-da here we go you will also see now that I've pulled two more bits of paper from my paper pad so this paper pad had doubles of everything and I'm going to use those to make one big long mat for my photographs I've put those on to white paper and then I'm going to stick those onto this black so the whole black and white thing is going to be happening um, really symbolized or really um, repeated throughout this whole layout which I really like <laughs> that's why I did it so black and white for my two 12 by 12 mats black and white for the frame around the pattern paper and then black and white matting the photos so once I join that piece of pattern paper together, I actually find out pretty quickly that it is a little bit longer than the 12 by 12 paper. So something is not true to size. I don't know if it's my six by six paper pad or my original 12 by 12 paper, but I need to be aware of that when I am gluing on these photos, because if I spread them evenly across the black and white mat, they'll actually be too big for the piece of paper. So I am conscious of that as I am organizing it. Are you a tidy scrapbooker? I just had to clean up that paper because it was getting in my way and it was annoying me. Um, so, and then all the tape and all the other mess that I've made. So that's what I'm up to at the moment, just backing, actually sticking all this down and backing that and getting it together. While that happens, I'm going to mention, don't forget to look at your six by six paper pad and double check if you've got any cut apart sheets. I have lots of bits and pieces left of this collection. I've got the thickers, I've got the chipboard, I've got some paper ephemera, but I ended up using quite a few fussy cut pieces from the cut apart sheet that is included in the six by six paper pad. So don't forget that that, might be a really good spot to get some ephemera for embellishing your pages. So I know I'm going to use one of these um, headings in this thicker sheet. There's one that says explore, which works really, really well with what's going with the photos. And then one that says ready, set, go, which I just really love. I'm really drawn to the ready, set, go. And I feel like I can also make that work too, because it's kind of what he's doing. I like the idea of only having three photos and having my title um, taking up the place of a fourth photo, but I'm not sure if I could choose one of the photos to not include because I just think they're all super cute. I'm having a play with using a frame to sort of highlight a main photo or um, shift your attention to something in particular in the photos, but none of those really worked. They looked a bit out of place. So I end up putting those aside. What I'm doing now is having a look through my different bits and bobs of ephemera and looking to see, basically making a yes pile and a no pile. So yes, it could be usable. No, it won't. It doesn't seem like it's going to match what I'm doing. Now I still leave the no pile within reach so that I can still grab it if I do decide I need it. Um, but it just helps the thinking process to have less options because I've already decided a few bits and pieces of what I'm going to use. So once I've done that, I am ready to get the main gist of my background stuck down so that I can really focus on embellishing this layout. So everything has been stuck down now and you'll notice, or you might not be able to notice, but you'll see in the close-ups at the end that I've left the colored pattern paper a square I have rounded the corners of the black and white and I have rounded the corners of the plain white, but then I've left the black, the final black mat um, square as well. Um, I probably would have rounded the corners of my patterned paper, but I decided after sticking that down that I liked the, the softness of rounding the corners to go with this layout. So 
instead of trying to rip them up and maybe damaging my layer, I decided I would alternate and have square, round, round, square, and just keep that as the look and feel of this, this layout. And I really do like the way that that turned out. So I'm now having a play with my embellishment clusters and I know I'm going to have three, my um, triangle happening on my page. And I'm looking at what I'm going to use to sort of base my clusters to be my um, grounding point. I'm also bearing in mind the, the sort of rule in inverted commas of, what is it, your 75% cluster, your 50% cluster and your 25% cluster. I'm just having a bit of a think and feel about how I'm going to work that and what's going to be what on my page. I'm also conscious of having each of my main color groups represented in each cluster. So I want a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. And I was finding that top cluster with the adventure pennant flag, I was missing something yellow. And I was having a play with the different bits and pieces that were yellow, but um, the bug didn't really match for me. The acetate number eight seemed really random and out of place. So I end up reaching for my cut apart sheet and pulling out some of the um, pages on there and fussy cutting those out to add that color that I was missing from each of my clusters. So first of all, I'm cutting out this little guy because you know, my son is a little guy and this is a little guy. So that goes well together. Um, and he's going to form part of the cluster because he had a blue base or blue shorts on. I thought he might be better over on the red and I had a play with putting my cluster over on the red side over there, but for some reason it didn't really speak to me being on the left on the right hand side and it is going to end up back over on the left and I'm going to have two clusters down underneath in my photos. There's a bit of a dead space in that um, bottom right hand photo in the actual photo. So I am going to have that cluster go up a little bit on top of that photo to sort of cover that dead space a little bit. And then underneath the bottom left hand photo, the cluster is going to sit just down underneath and it's going to be my smallest cluster. So I end up fussy cutting this little guy. I end up fussy cutting um, a puppy and I end up fussy cutting a fox. And so that straight away can give me a really good um, red and a really good yellow piece of ephemera that I can use within my clusters where I feel like I'm missing missing that or representing that color. I also fussy cut this little ruler off the, um, off the six by six cut apart sheet. At first I wasn't really sure how I was going to place it, but I really wanted to include it in the cluster to just get that color spread happening. And I'm quite liking the way it's coming together now that I can see a representation of each of the colors within those clusters. Um, at this stage as well, I think I started thinking about enamel dots and remembering that they are a fantastic way of also bringing in that piece of color. So if I do happen to be missing a color there, it's not a make or break situation, people. It doesn't matter if I don't have it, but I can also represent it using um, an enamel dot if that's the way, if I need to. So I decided that the big boy tag... I really wanted to use it to, to balance the base of this cluster because I knew I wanted it closer to the title. Um, but the word boy, even though that's what he is, it just wasn't rocking for me. I didn't, um, it wasn't really, I wasn't, I think it was just too much text with the word boy and then ready, set, go time and then adventure down underneath and then the play hard, love, grow um, text as well. It was just text upon text upon text. And especially if I wanted that boy tag and the play hard, love, grow, um, saying it just all felt a bit too much. So I ended up covering the word boy, um, using the play hard, love, grow comment and the bottom of the ready or the top of the ready word, sorry. And I'm happier with the way that that tag grounds that um, cluster, but it also doesn't have so much text going on. 
the little piece of blue over there on the right hand side that I'm doing now it says the word toys so I thought that worked really well because that's obviously what Thomas is doing he's digging around in all of the little toys to find what see what he can find so um because my photos are stuck up on foam I think I mentioned that if I didn't my photos are stuck up on foam the whole piece is stuck up on foam um a lot of the cluster pieces need to go up as well so by using a mixture of chipboard uh, that's obviously higher as well so some of these foam um, some of these embellishments in fact the little fox head he will need two amounts of foam under him to make him big enough to actually cover um, to sit flush with the chipboard so if you're not into lump and bump do be wary of what things like adding those things can do to your layouts so I love a bit of dimension and a bit of lump and bump that doesn't bother me at all but yeah definitely keep that in mind yourself so I'm just adding uh, my title I'm going to jump ahead in just a sec because you don't need to sit and watch me fiddle with my title um, I just pulled a pin then to help maneuver the little tiny bottom of the exclamation point because it's a bit too fiddly for my little fingers and so now all the title is connected except for the word ready because obviously I want that underneath the cluster so I'm popping up that play hard love grow there um, with foam and having it sit up a little bit on top of the tag as I said love me some dimension um, but I do realize that I actually can use that play hard love grow to cover the entire word boy um, so I am going to pull it down just a little bit and then I don't have to worry so much about the word ready being in the right position to cover cover the word so there we go so that now the whole tag can sit up a little bit higher and everybody wins so I'll put that word ready on I seriously considered adding a little bit of glue to these thickers before sticking those down. I find these ones are almost like the shiny plastic kind of feel to these thickers. And I find that sometimes they don't ad as adhere as nicely as the foam stickers might do. But they're a little bit better than what the chipboard thickers tend to be. So I didn't end up adding extra glue but we'll see if they have the bend test later on and if they're going to last otherwise I might need to go back and um yeah um sorry glue those all on so we'll just have to wait and see see how they go so now each cluster has got a little bit of blue a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and a little bit of black and white happening in it which is just all the different colors and features that are happening throughout my layout um i am going to grab some enamel dots and at first uh these are reject shop enamel dots that i'm using they i don't think they supply these anymore um they're old so i love them i hoard them try not to use them but they're the perfect colors so at first i just put one enamel dot in one of the color of choice and then I decide it needs two, so I do that one, um, one of each color. And then I decide, well, if you've already got two, you might as well put a third one on and represent all three colors. So I end up putting a yellow, a blue, and a red enamel dot in each cluster in varying sized dots. So a smaller, medium, and a large, I think, in each dot, which I think is just a really nice um, finish. To each cluster and then once I do that I'm actually pretty much done I do go ahead and type out my journaling I do my journaling on an old typewriter that we found in my grandfather's um, shed after he passed away so I do go ahead and type out my journaling and you'll see in the close-ups my finished piece with my typed up journaling and everything ready to go so I hope you have enjoyed watching this process video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed hopping along with everybody in our 6x6 six six paper pad party. Um, there are a lot of people that have joined in, so definitely check them out down below. Um, there's links to everyone that's part participating, and I think there's about 30 people in this hop, so you've got lots of watching to do. Um, I hope I've inspired you to dig out your 6x6 six six paper pad and give something a go. 
Thanks, everyone. See you next time.